Hello again, everyone. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting. And yes, that's right. This is another Resilient Entrepreneur podcast. So you know the deal. It's a nugget or a question, sometimes both. And today, the question is, how well are you really managing your resources? And if we boil everything down to just two things, time and money, because both of them can be limited and both of them can run out, and both of them are things that you have control over. So I wanted to provide two very quick examples, and then both examples provide really good insight into time and money. So one of them was an example of a, a newer surgeon, and he sent me the floor plan for the space and for which he bought. It was really a great flow, great layout. The architectural design of the practice really looked really good. And really what we were trying to do was figure out what is the absolute best use of his space. And you know, some offices that I go to that when I'm there to evaluate it as if I owned it, as if I'm the CEO of that operation, you know, I'm looking at it as if what's the best use of this. And, you know, he made a very interesting comment is one. I, I don't know that I've really heard much from a lot of folks is that he had one room and it's actually really the largest room in the entire practice, which is for the most part going unused. And when he did the calculation of the square footage compared to his rent, he was paying about 1500 to $1,700 per month to have this space. Now, mind you, he really can't carve it off and, and rent it out to anyone else. It just, you know, flow-wise and a bunch of other things, it just didn't make sense. But what it forced us to do was sit back and look at, well, how's all the space being used? What are we really, what are we doing with everything that we have at our disposal? And some of it was... You know, so we figured out a plan for that largest room that's not really being used. And, and really up to date, that room has been used as storage. And I'll tell you, it's actually, and, it's, and, it, and really that room should be one of the most productive, if not the most productive room in the entire office. So, you know, and, I, and I've been in so many other locations, so many other offices that, you know, I, I'm thinking back to one actually many years ago. They had the entire operatory stacked with like old compute, and I'm talking computers that are like I looked at them and I said, "When what year did you buy this Tandy 1000?" Kind of you know jokingly, but this thing and some of you who are listening to this might say, "What's a Tandy 1000?" So Google that. Uh, but when I was looking at some that they had old files, they had old decorations. I mean, most of the stuff, literally, it all just needed to go to the dump. There was, you know, either you call a shredding service for all the files, you haul a, a uh, trash service to come in and, you know, bada bing, bada boom, in an hour, maybe two. Now you have a room you can actually use, something that can generate money as opposed to just being a boat anchor of an expense every month. Many of you have very similar setups where it, it may be that either we're not utilizing space and it's just a, a money suck every month, and we need to figure out how to actually start using it to generate income or open up our capacity or figure out how to basically make more money. I mean, let's face it, we're in business so how do we make more money with a space that we have? And, you know, that's that's what we were doing. So even with the one the example that I started with, you know, we went through the went through the entire drawing of the office and we figured out how to utilize that that one space, which really he'd already figured it out. It's just a matter of we have to do it. So then we went through and we figured out how we can rob space and move it somewhere else because this office was built probably, I'm guessing, 20 plus years ago. And, you know, technology has changed so many things today. You know, there, you know, many practices had to have labs at one point where, you know, we were trimming models and doing all these different things. We had developer rooms. Well, in many practices, developer room has now become a storage closet because we don't develop films anymore. We have digital x-rays. In today's world, we really don't need labs like we used to because we can dig, take digital scans and send them off to a lab and have them take care of things. So we can still we can cut things down and pare it down 
and make it into what we need it to be, but then open it up. So let's just say if you have this big lab and that lab really is is just a, a hog of space that we really never use. So what if we took that, cut it down, and then turn the remainder of the space into a con- consult room? Bam, now we've got something Now we've got something that allows us to leverage our space, something that allows us to have a different presentation space, something that we can really dedicate to helping our patients see what it is that we have to offer or what we can really, the better message is, what can we do for them and show them as opposed to, you know, let's face, you know, operatories most times are really not set up for that type of thing. So, you know, Turn that, turn that lab into a, cons- a uh, consult room. So you also have another, uh, an, an, or I have another example for you, where I was working with a team member today, and you know sometimes we just, we know what we can do, but we don't think about how we can leverage ourselves. And this is a very, very simple example, but it applies to so many things. So they they had created a new graphic or basically a new information sheet that they wanted to take out to all of their referring offices and this is one where you know we could go the inexpensive route and we we find the most inexpensive print job to get 500 of these printed and when we get 500 of these printed and we get it done on you know m- normal copy paper is about 20 pounds and you could put it on something like that or something even thinner and really, what's the quality of what we've given out? But more importantly, you know, what are we delivering? So when we, you know, their idea was, well, we can get it on normal paper, but then I can laminate it because we have a laminator in the office. I said, okay, how long do you think it would take you to laminate even a couple hundred of those? And she thought, well, probably eight hours. And she thought it was so cool that she could do this because she has the machine. Okay, well, let's do the math here real quick and multiply eight by what you're making per hour. And then let's go back to the printer and say, okay, if I were to print these on better quality paper and use a different type of ink or maybe even laminate them, what would it cost me? And, you know, so it really came down to what's the highest and best use of her time? Because if I can pay a printer, I don't know, 80 bucks more, 100 bucks more, even $150 more to go and, and and print these jobs out on a higher quality of paper to where I don't even have to laminate them now. It's just on a better quality, more durable piece of paper. Then what do you think is the best use of her time? Sitting behind a lamination machine for eight hours? Or do you think it's her running by the printer and picking up the box of 500 pieces that she had printed, and now she has the rest of the day or seven hours to go shake hands and kiss babies? I mean, let's face it, that, that's going to move the needle. That's going to change the game for us. So really, in the first example, it was about best utilization of the space and the money being spent on the space. In the second example, it's really the best investment of the time. And you know, I'm sure many of you is listening to this. Hopefully, you're, you're, you're sitting here um, tapping your finger or running your fingers through your hair or something because you're starting to think and maybe even getting annoyed with the fact that there's a lot of things going on in your business or your life where you need to be either utilizing your resources and your things in a better way to create more income, or you need to find a better way to use your time. Because many of you are doing jobs or tasks that really are adding zero value to your day. And that, that is one of the things that I work with with my clients is to figure out what is the absolute best utilization of your time or your team's time And then we find other people sometimes to do the other things. You know, just like being a bookkeeper. I've never found a client who generated more income by doing their own bookkeeping. Never. Never will see it either. I guarantee you that one. Prove me wrong. So that was your Resilient Entrepreneur podcast for today. Really, really consider how you utilize your money. Consider how you utilize your time and how those two things are going to come together and create more income for you in the future. As always, if you have questions, comments, or topics that you'd love for me to cover, please let me know. Drop it in the the comments below or send me a direct message. I'd love to hear from you.